Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, as you have seen in the thumbnail, in this video we are gonna see. What if Naruto was descendant of Demon King, this is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Naruto struggled to get off the ground. Niji had just shut down his chakra points and was now taunting him about being a loser just like Hinata. The memory of him talking to the shy Hayuga girl at the training post, how she feared for his life when fighting Niji, made Naruto's blood boil with rage, as another memory of that same sweet girl fighting her cousin and nearly being destroyed filled the young Uzumaki's mind. It wasn't fair. That is training the entire month been for nothing. Not surprising that it was since Kakashi Baka refused to train his only other student, aside from the Ichiha for the exams, and the pervert Jiraiya only taught Toad summoning. Even after learning it, Jiraiya had forbidden him from using it in the exams and would have Naruto removed from the contract if he did. What was the point in training him in things if they couldn't be used? He's just like the others. Holding me back. And for what? Probably thinks I'm the fox in some form or hates me because of the furball. How can I keep my promise to make Niji pay when my training has been so little, while his has no doubt been non-stop? Damn it. Thought Naruto, as he struggled to get off the ground and ignored the boos for his efforts that came from the crowd. You should stay down loser. Fate decrees you lose and it will be fate that makes you die if you don't stay down. Even the people in the stands know what I'm telling you is true and half of them aren't even shinobi, said Niji seeing Naruto stand up and glaring at him with those blue eyes that seemed to be changing slightly. Fuck you. Maybe these people would be singing a different tune if they knew how you tried to kill your own cousin. Who the fuck does that? And to someone like Hinata. She didn't want to fight you because you're like a brother to her. You still are in Hinata's eyes. Kind of ironic really. You claim those eyes see everything Niji, but those eyes don't see the one person out of your entire clan who actually cares about family and making it whole again. I'm not the loser here Niji. You are. Said Naruto feeling like his blood was on fire, his body felt like it was ready to explode with power and felt a powerful surge of energy running through his veins that the Yuzumaki thought was because of the QB. That was the problem though. It wasn't QB's power. It wasn't her strength flowing through him right now. It was something worse. Something far more powerful. You're the one. At last said a demonic voice that made Naruto tense wondering if that was QB for a second before realizing the voice was different. W who? Who are you? said Naruto, as he felt the power inside of him get stronger and made his body ache in pain at the feeling while the demonic energy cover his entire body for everyone to see. Deep within Naruto, QB recognized the demonic power that was now consuming her vessel, and not since the Shinigami being summoned did the Fox Queen know the true meaning of fear. Oh no. No, it cannot be. Not him. This boy couldn't possibly of his bloodline thought QB as she retreated back deeper into her cage and felt the presence of a being within Naruto thought to have been dead for over a millennia. What is that? This energy around him is twisted, cruel, and darker than anything I've ever felt before. Thought Niji, as he saw Naruto clutching his sides in pain and letting out an inhuman moan of pain. Above the two combatants, the sky darkened, dark clouds covered the sun, and crimson lightning flashed around them, while scaring the audience watching on, while some of the shinobi thought it was the fox revealing himself to the world once more. In secret, those shinobi had weapons at the ready to move in and kill the vessel should that be the case. You don't know how to use your power. Let me show you. Said the demonic voice in Naruto's head and in that moment the vessel of QB let out a scream of pain. The demonic power exploded from his very being while covering him in a massive dome of its energy that Niji had to leap away from it. The red lightning struck the dome of demonic energy, swirling around it like a violent storm and the violent unnatural wind carrying Naruto's screams throughout the leaf. The inhuman screams of pain had soon become a demonic roar of power, as the body of Yuzumaki Naruto changed entirely under the demonic power before it left, and when the dust finally settled. It revealed a single figure walking slowly towards Niji. Yet the walk was a walk with a purpose. Everyone's eyes widened at the sight of what was once Yuzumaki Naruto, as Niji took several steps back, the Sandame Hokage in the Kage booth gripped the armrests of his chair tightly. And even Arachimaru under the disguise of the Kazikage began breathe heavier at the sight of this transformed boy. No. This was not a boy. Of that, the snake Sanin was sure, as he knew this power was not the QB's power and felt this was something else entirely. Something far more powerful. I have returned, said the voice of the figure slightly taller than Niji, currently wearing white pants, a yellow obi sash, and a yellow headband across his forehead, where the leaf symbol once was with demonic tattoos all over his body. You're not Naruto, said Niji, as he saw the face of this person having what? Possessed his opponent and fighting in the blonde's place. How observant you are. 
you're indeed a credit to your clan, said the demonic figure sarcastically, before letting out a demonic chuckle and grinned at a vicious grin at Niji. Who are you? What are you? Some kind of demon? Said Niji, as he got into a gentle fist stance and became more unnerved at the dark laughter this person was letting out. Of course I am a demon you fool. It should be obvious considering my energy is very much different than yours. As for my name. My name. Is Raisin. The Demon King of War said Raisin, as he could feel the eyes of everyone widening and their breaths being inhaled at his words. The Demon King, said Niji, as he saw Raisin flex his claws and those eyes seemed to stare right into his very soul. Yes. In the realm of Makai, there was once three Demon Kings. Each ruled over their respected territories and I was one of them many years ago long before your world became what it is now. Out of all three of us. I was the strongest of them. Now here I am, temporarily possessing my long-lost descendant, and I'm going to relish the feeling of kicking the crap out of your body for what you did to your innocent cousin. Or did you forget the promise Naruto made with her blood? Said Raisin, as he felt a sense of history repeating itself, and wondered if Naruto would fight back against the possession like Yusuke did. Before Niji could react, Raisin was in front of him, punching the Hyuga prodigy in the gut, causing vomit to instantly come out of the boy's mouth seconds upon impact, and forcing him to his knees. The moment later when those knees touched the ground did they leave it, as Raisin followed up with a spin kick to Niji's head and sent the Hyuga boy bouncing like a rock being thrown on water into the stadium wall. However, before Niji hit the wall, Raisin was in between the two, grabbed his prey, and threw him down to the ground. Landing gracefully, Raisin walked in a calculating manner down the crater he caused using Niji's body and picked the Hyuga branch member up by his neck while grinning a wicked grin before punching barely conscious Leaf Shinobi in the ribs. Again. And again. And again. Each blow echoed throughout the stadium, many wincing upon the sound the impact made and seemed to last forever before the demonic figure threw the broken body of Hyuga Niji onto the ground. Everyone thought Raisin was done with Niji, but the idea of it being over was not the case, as the former demon king of Makai raised his right hand and pointed his index finger at the Hyuga boy before a small ball of demonic energy surrounded the tip of the index finger. Is this. Is this my end? thought Niji, as he coughed up blood and looked at the red ball of energy the size of his fist, barely a few inches from his face, that was practically ready to blow him to pieces, while his soon-to-be executioner just smiled. Time to die, said Raisin, as he was about to release the demon gun and wipe Niji out from the face of the planet. When his body froze up. Or rather when Naruto's body froze up. Get out of my body, said Naruto from within, as he was now fighting for control with Raisin, and it wasn't easy. Damn brat. Let me finish this. I saw your memories of what this Baka did to that girl, and we both know he deserves to die, said Raisin finding himself unable to fire the attack at Niji's face. Maybe he does, but we both know Hinata-chan will be sad over Niji's death, and she doesn't deserve that, said Naruto, as he sensed Raisin become angry with that, and yet knew this still girl cared deeply for her cousin. As much as killing the little prick would satisfy his bloodlust, Raisin knew Hinata didn't deserve to see her cousin get obliterated from the existence, and decided to show Niji mercy. Just this once. Consider yourself very lucky boy. My descendant has convinced me to spare your miserable life for the sake of your cousin. Don't abuse this small act of mercy, or you will regret it, said Raisin, as he cancelled out the attack and began walking away from the broken body of Hyuga Niji. W winner. Yuzumaki Naruto. Said Genma, as he watched a possessed boy walking to the steps to the fighter's box and quickly summoned some medics to take care of Niji. In the stand however, no one clapped their hands, no one cheered, and yet no one booed either at the results of this turn of events. Not surprising since everyone was shocked at what happened, as they couldn't seem to understand what it was that just happened, and that the Hyuga prodigy had lost to the QB Brad. It was as if their own little world had shifted in its axis. In the fighter's box, Raisin was given a wide gap of space, as he sat down on a bench and ignored the frightened looks everyone was giving him. Even Gara was looking at him with fear in his eyes, as Shukaku had was whimpering deeply within his prison, knowing that he was nothing compared to the Demon King, and decided to stay silent in order to continue living. As this happened, Raisin let out a small grunt of pain, as the seal holding the QB appeared on Naruto's stomach and snarled at the seal, before he slammed his clawed hand into it. Those around him thought he was crazy, but Raisin was far from that category, as he began pulling what his hand grabbed and threw a crimson chakra-covered figure out of his body onto the floor. When the demonic chakra died down, it revealed a crimson-haired girl in her late teens, wearing a black kimono and black chakra around her neck with the kanji for Shinigami on it. It was QB. Get up Kaiu. You have much to answer for in regards to my descendant, said Raisin breathing heavily since removing the fox queen from her prison, that was this body was no easy thing to do. 
Are Raisin Sama? said QB, as she knew ages ago when Raisin addressed her by that short name he gave, it meant the Demon King was angry and she was the source of it. You know what you did, Kai. I saw the boy's memories. I have seen everything in his mind from the day he was born up until now. It is because of you that this boy has no mother to love and no father to guide him. I could wipe you out from existence using less than a third of my power, given you're barely considered an Airank demon now. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't destroy you, said Raisin, as he looked at the woman before him, swing her nine tails slightly in her kneeling position, and was clearly afraid to look him in the eyes. I didn't mean to attack anyone Raisin-sama. It's just. After the Kashina woman gave birth to her son, Ichihamadara appeared before her and freed me from my seal before using his damn Sharingan to take control, said QB, as she heard him scoff at the mention of the Sharingan. And kept her head bowed, knowing to counter what it would mean if she did. You know speak to me about that pathetic bloodline. Those eyes only affect demons if the demon in question has a weak will. I thought you of all people were stronger than some spiteful human with a god complex in thinking he was better than everyone else, said Raisin, as he saw QB move her head away in shame, and the former demon king let out a sigh, knowing that not every demon was as strong as him. I'm sorry Raisin-sama. I didn't want to kill the boy's parents, but after the Yandane prepared to seal me again, the desire to be free was too great an opportunity to pass up, and I tried to grab onto it, said QB. As she had never had freedom like that after losing it to the Shadame Hokage sealing her up in his wife and then Yuzumaki Kashina herself. And look what happened. You became imprisoned again. It is only through my power that you're out of it and have gained some small amount of freedom, though not much as you are still bound by the Shinigami seal currently on your neck, said Raisin, as he felt Naruto trying to regain control again. But kept the boy from doing so and assured his descendant the body would soon belong to him again. What is to become of me now then? said QB, as she saw Raisin consider all that had happened and felt like she was standing before Kami awaiting sentence. For the moment, you have temporary freedom to live outside of this boy's body, but not enough to go anywhere you want, and there is a limit to the range of being out of his body. As such, I've decided to let you out to help the boy in whatever it is he needs to further help him, and anything else that comes up that he may require of you, said Raisin grinning a QB seeing her blush slightly at the innuendo and fidgeted under his gaze. I understand Raisin-sama, said QB, as she knew better than defying the former Demon King's words and risk bringing more trouble than she could handle upon herself. Good. For the moment, I need to speak with the boy and tell him about his heritage regarding me. Well, that happens, you are to guard the boy and make sure nothing happens to this body while I handle his mental training to handle the changes. Said Raisin seeing QB nod her head again and bow deeper. As you command Raisin-sama. I won't fail you, said QB and looked up at Raisin seeing him now giving her a gentle smile. I know you won't fail Kai. Just try your best. That's all I've ever asked of my own subordinates. Said Raisin, as he saw QB nod and then let his head go limp that indicated to her that the former Demon King was now talking to Naruto. Hage Booth. The Sandame Hokage was now sweating up a heavy storm, as he knew there was only one reason Raisin had come back to this world, if only to temporarily possess Naruto, and it involved the contract the Shinigami made with the Yandame. Minato in his infinite wisdom had bound the village itself to the contract in seeing his son as a hero for holding the QB inside of him. That part of the contract had been done as a failsafe in the off chance Kashina had been right about the people and how they would hate their only child for holding the fox. It had even been placed onto the seal thanks to the Shinigami itself, but the Sandame Hokage being the professor that he was, had been able to cover that part of the seal up with a signal blocker, which had weakened the seal in the process, since the signal was connected to the array. But left the Shinigami none the wiser and allowed for things to happen the way they did. The idea, which became the Sandame's overall plan, was to make Naruto naturally loyal to him, as the planned assassination attempts by the people, the preventing of these attempts and showing supposed kindness to the boy, had helped cement such things. He had gotten Jiraiya involved in this as a means to control Naruto, should the fox ever get free of Minato's seal, and lied to Tsunade about her godson, whom she didn't know the name of at the time dying during the sealing process. How? How could the blocker been removed? How could this have happened now? My plan to mold Naruto has been ruined. Thought the Sandame, as he did have a special Anbu squad on standby to kill Naruto, should the efforts he had put into the boy's mental conditioning not produced fruit in a figurative sense, but now such a squad would be like a fly that could be swatted away with ease. And even the old Kage himself even would have been destroyed in the process regardless of age. Next to him, Orochimaru was terrified at what he had just seen, and yet. He wanted the boy to be his new vessel. 
the descendant of the demon king was right across from him on the other side of the stadium, yet he couldn't make his move, knowing that the plan to kill the Sandane would fail, and the simple humiliating fact Raisin would crush him easily with a snap of his fingers. For now, the snake Sandan would have to go along with his original plan to kill the Sandame Hokage, and then find a way to go after that body to make it his own. Naruto's Mindscape. Who the hell are you? It's bad enough I have Fox inside of me and everyone hating my guts for it. Now I have you possessing my body, telling everyone you're a demon, and making everyone else think I'm one too. Said Naruto, who was pissed off beyond belief, and saw Raisin grinning while sitting down on his throne he created. Quit your whining. You sound just like my son Yusuke when he visited me in Makai after learning I possessed him in his fight. I guess that makes you my grandson in demon terms, since you are just as much his descendant as you are mine, said Raisin seeing Naruto look at him surprised by this statement. I wish people would stop lying and give me a straight answer for once, said Naruto, as he sat down in front of Raisin and saw the former demon king let out a sigh. In all honesty Naruto, your life shouldn't have been like this, as the your father, who was the Yandame Hokage, had made a deal with the Shinigami regarding the village when he sealed Kaiyu into your body and was to be a failsafe in the off chance you being mistreated. Said Raisin seeing Naruto's eyes widen at this news. The Yandame Hokage is. Was my father. Said Naruto seeing Raisin nod. Yeah. Though you get my blood from your mother's side of the family though it is watered down quite a bit before it got to you. In regards to the contract, apparently the seal holding QB was supposed to break in the event the village didn't honor your father's dying wish to see you as a hero. The Sandane put a signal blocker on the alert system built into the seal, so the Shinigami would not know of the abuse, which was disabled after Orochimaru hit the seal with the five-pronged seal, and the blocker was destroyed unknowingly by Jiraiya after he removed the snake Sanin's handiwork. After that, the Shinigami discovered what the Sandame had done and summoned me before him to discuss handling the situation after learning about your bloodline was connected to my own, said Raisin seeing Naruto become angry with the Sandame and wanted to rip the old man's spine out. That traitor. He betrayed my family. That fucking hypocrite. Said Naruto as he Raisin nodded his head in agreement and got off his throne to walk over to the boy. You'll get your family's revenge soon enough Naruto. Until then, you are going to train with me in here to control your body and the power I have awakened within you, said Raisin, as he saw Naruto looking at him with an intense look. And it reminded the former demon king of Yusuke when the boy came to Maki. Bring it on. Said Naruto, as he wasn't afraid of pain and was going to learn everything he could from his ancestor. Brace yourself, said Raisin, as the former demon king began his own way of training his descendant and the training being of the hands-on approach. Fighter's Box. Everyone around Naruto's body gave it a lot of space as they went from watching it to watching the female fox queen they now knew to be QB no Kitsune, and for the members of the leaf in the box, meant quite a bit of information had hit them like a ton of bricks. The impact behind this information had made them all conclude they had been lied to about the QB being killed when it or rather when she attacked the leaf. They had seen the people around Naruto during the academy, mainly the instructors there had given the Uzumaki a hard time and trying to make him fail. They never knew why until now. This is troublesome. It won't take long for this to get out, and people wanting this female demon's head on a platter thought Shikamaru, as Genma called him. And Tamari down to partake in their match since the Hokage had so generously moved Sasuke's match with Gara to a later time in the tournament. Get down here you lazy bum and fight me. Said Tamari currently down on the arena floor waiting for the lazy Nara. They'd rather not. Proctor I ah. Said Shikamaru, as he was sent over the edge by QB, who whistled innocently and saw everyone in the fighter's box looking at her. What? Lazy men need a good kick in the ass every once in a while, said QB while looking at everyone around her and daring them to challenge that statement. No one did. Great. Either I stay up there to contend with QB or I face this troublesome girl from Suna. I can't win no matter what I do. Thought Shikamaru getting up from the ground to reluctantly fight the Suna girl. Here I come you lazy baka. Said Tamari charging at Shikamaru with her iron fan and the lazy Nara thought one thing. His life sucked. As the battle of the sexes raged below the fighter's box, the genin above watching the match and Naruto's newly transformed body while it glowed with an aura of demonic energy around him, spiking every so often. To her credit, QB watched her vessel for over a decade without the blush that wanted to be on her face from appearing and had to admit the boy's physic was impressive. Then again, being Raisin's descendant, it went without saying that Naruto would inherit his demonic ancestor's figure. Back when she was a little fox girl growing up, QB had a secret crush on Raisin, as he was everything required to have in a mate and then summon being the demon king of Makai. It had saddened the fox queen to know he died by starving himself to death for the human woman that stole his heart. She had heard the rumors behind his starvation, but no one knew the truth until the demon king's descendant Yusuke had come along and revealed the truth to all of Makai. 
Some had thought Raisin was a fool to fall in love with the very woman that came from the very species he fed upon, but those that knew the Demon King the best also knew Raisin was just the kind of person to do that, and the man's honor would compel him not to eat in the name of love. And now I'm technically a slave to Raisin's grandson currently sitting less than three feet from me thought QB, as she was unsure how to feel about that due to the relationship they had formed after that Bakajureya threw the boy off into a cliff. And nearly killed them both just to activate the summoning of the toads. She would have to ask Naruto for permission to kick the Sanin in the nuts for what he did, and QB was sure her vessel would do it anyway just to make a statement. Looking over at Gara, the Fox Queen could secretly see Shukaku's power oozing all over the boy and knew the seal on him was weak and barely keeping the raccoon dog in line. In fact, the only reason the red-haired boy was feeling less pressure from the insane demon was due to Raisin's power and herself being added into the mix. Shukaku could never on his best day take QB down, even at her worst, and given she was nothing in comparison to Raisin, much less his new descendant was more than enough to keep the insane one-tailed from doing something stupid. Are you the reason he is hated by the villagers? Said Shino seeing the fox queen look at him for a moment before nodding. Haven't you ever wondered why the people hated Naruto when growing up? How they tried to make him suffer for my sins. Being an Aburam, I'm sure you can see how logical it can be and how wrong their actions have been since they started. Said QB seeing Shino nod and understanding since the villagers had been cruel to Naruto. I have often wondered and now I know why. From what I heard of your conversation with Raisin, it appears you were not yourself when attacking the village, and the blame for it lies with Achiha Madara. I was under the impression he died fighting the Shade mages ago at the Valley of the End, said Shino hearing QB chuckle and shake her head. I know what I saw Aburam. I have very good memory, and I know I saw his Sharingan eyes before he used their power on me. I know them because he used them on me when fighting your Shade Hokage for the right to be Hokage in the first place. How do you think that valley became what it is? Said QB, as she saw Shino's eyebrows rise up and knew he put things together. I see. Can Naruto be influenced by such power? Said Shino knowing that Naruto had become something of a half-demon if not full demon and could possibly be affected by the Sharingan. If there is one thing about Raisin you should know regarding his bloodline as there is no one in the human realm, demon realm, and the heavenly realm for that matter who has the power to influence him, said QB seeing Shino nod before looking at Naruto's still slumped form. Winner by forfeit. Sabaku no Tamari. Said Genma in the arena below, which surprised everyone again since Shikamaru had Tamari caught in his shadow possession jutsu, and yet the genin forfeited, stating he was out of chakra before letting his opponent go. Damn it Shikamaru. Why do you have to be so lazy? Said Ino angrily seeing her friend and teammate give up like that with such a lame excuse. Troublesome blonde. Win or lose I'm going to get yelled at by Ino. I can make it happen on my own terms at the very least thought Shikamaru as he let out a sigh and soon found himself up in the fighter's box with everyone else. Looks like my match is next. Thank you for talking with me QB Sama, said Shino as he bowed his head slightly and began walking towards the steps to head down to the arena. Proctor, I forfeit. Said Kankuro getting booze from the crowd. Now it is my turn, said Gara softly as he left silently down the steps closest to him and didn't look back to see the others looking in his direction. And it was at that point did Naruto open his eyes and stood up too, before walking over to where he could get a good view of the arena floor to see the next fight. Raisin-sama. Said QB, as she didn't know if it was Naruto now in control or still Raisin in the transformed body. No Kaiyu-chan. Grandpa's gone, said Naruto in a deeper, more mature-sounding voice as he stared down at Gara and the space where the Achiha was supposed to be. But wasn't. I see. I'm sure you had a lot to talk about inside your mind, said QB, as she looked where he did and saw the same thing with her eyes too. There was no Achiha. So why were they waiting for the spoiled brat to arrive? Did she just answer her own question? We talked. We trained. I now know many truths that were kept hidden from me. No more will I be lied to by the likes of them. Said Naruto, as he looked at the sand aim across from him and let out a demonic growl at the old Kage. Genma was about to call the fight in Gara's favor by Sasuke not being in the arena when lo and behold the boy along with his sensei appeared in a swirl leaves meant to impress everyone around them. Of course, given what happened with Naruto changing into his new demonic form, the entrance at Chiha Sasuke had was worthy of a yawn and a small clap at best. Are we late? Said Kakashi seeing the people weren't impressed with their entrance and he found that rather odd. Not only are you late Kakashi, but Ichiha Sasuke nearly got himself disqualified, had the third Hokage not show leniency, and pushed the match back. Incidentally, your other student beat Niji and made your entrance look like crap compared to him, said Genma, as he pointed to the fighter's box, and the two leaf shinobi next to him looked at the new improved version of Yuzumaki Naruto with wide eyes. Is that? Naruto. 
thought Kakashi, as he felt a sudden wave of fear run through his body and saw those angry bloodlust-filled eyes staring back. Seconds later, the same figure was in front of Kakashi and Sasuke, with everyone tensing at Naruto's sudden presence on the arena floor. What I have to say to you two fighting will be quick so shut up and listen. I don't care who it is that wins this match. I honestly don't give two shits which one of you advances to face me. I have a lot of anger itching to come out and the winner of this match will have to fight me in the next round. So before either of you move in to try to winning against the other. Just remember who it is you're fighting next. Just ask Niji if you don't believe me, said Naruto letting out a demonic chuckle before disappearing and then reappearing to the right of the Hokage while leaning on the railing of the Kage booth. Then Naruto? said the Sandame seeing the boy grinning in his new body and it made the old Kage's heartbeat faster while Genma ordered the start of the match below them. Grandpa Raisin wanted to let you know the Shinigami is looking forward to claiming your soul old man. Something to do with the village breaking their side of the contract when it came to Kaiyu-chan's containment all those years ago in seeing me as a hero. You did a very bad thing putting that blocker on the seal old man. A very naughty thing to do, said Naruto glaring at the Sandame Hokage, now looking to flee from his sight, but couldn't because the glare kept the old man in place. And they both knew the moment the third moved from his seat he was a dead duck during hunting season. Then Naruto, I did what I did in order to. Said the Sandame Hokage, as he stopped when Naruto pointed his index finger at him and saw the boy wagging it in a scolding manner while shaking his head. Save your excuses for the Shinigami old man. I don't want to hear it, said Naruto, as he turned his head to see Sasuke charging up the lightning in his hand while on the stadium wall, and Gara forming a dome of sand over his body with a giant eyeball above to see things for the redhead. Dodori, said Sasuke with his Sharingan activated as he charged forward and thrust the lightning in his hand into Gara's sand dome. For a moment, there was silence, as the Suna siblings couldn't believe someone had hit the dome of sand and that it was Ichiha Sasuke of all people. Bakashi was in the stands with the audience with pride showing on his masked face at the sight of the Kazikage's son being taken down a peg by his favorite student. In another lifetime, things would have been different as Sasuke's Shidori should have pierced the dome of sand and hit Gara right in the shoulder. In another lifetime, Sasuke would have caused Gara to panic at the sight of his own blood being spilled instead of it being the other way around, but that was not this lifetime and not this day on account of Shukaku, not whispering things to his vessel to distract the boy from the fight. As such, when the eyeball saw the Chidori coming at him, Gara's mind instantly thickened the sand around him to compress into a denser shield and stop the attack from piercing his shield. My turn, said Gara to himself, as his sand wrapped around Sasuke's arm and crushed it before throwing the Ichiha away several feet. Now many in the audience were worried, as the Ichiha prodigy many thought would be unstoppable, had just been thrown aside like a rag doll by the youngest of the Kazikage's children and his mastery over sand. Bakashi himself was shocked as he had trained Sasuke to combat Gara using his personal jutsu and combined it with the speed training he copied from Lee to pass down to the Achiha to use perfectly to defeat the repeated boy. In the Jounin's mind and by all accounts. Sasuke should be winning. How could he have done that? Kakashi sensei said the Chidori would pierce through the sand and do what no other jutsu could. So why did it fail? Thought Sasuke as he got up off the ground and held onto his mutilated arm. Is that it? Is that your power? You spent that whole month preparing to use speed and that jutsu on me? Nothing else. Pathetic, said Gara seeing Sasuke looking at him with intense anger in his eyes. How dare you talk back to me like that? I'm an Achiha. An elite. You're nothing more than some bastard child of the Kazikage. Said Sasuke seeing Gara looking back at him with that calm unreadable expression on his face. You think I care about being his child? I don't care about my father at all. If given the chance, I would kill him right now and all of the people in Suna that support his actions regarding my life. Said Gara before shooting sand bullets at Sasuke and the Ichiha had to use his Sharingan to help dodge the attacks. Before the match could continue any further however, feathers fell from the sky and an explosion was heard above in the Kage booth. The invasion of the leaf had begun. All around them, leaf forces were finding themselves fighting sound and Suna Shinobi, while the Kazikage's three children appeared in the center of the arena. Damari was now telling Gara to unleash Shukaku, as was the plan when they allied with Orochimaru to take down Kanoha, but Gara shook his head, saying Shukaku didn't want to come out, even if its vessel was asleep. And would have said more had QB not appeared in front of them with a scowl on her face. Don't even think about it. Even if you let Shukaku out, I'm the least of your worries, and you know who it is I'm talking about, said QB, as she pointed to where Naruto was now in a barrier containing the Sandame Hokage and Orochimaru with the battle they're about to take place. She's right. 
even without Naruto fighting out here, there is no way the Shukaku would even stand a chance against QB, and it's not like she let Gar release a thought to Mari, as she saw Kankuro's hand sliding back towards his puppets, but one of the tails from QB pierced his hand. And began to burn it with her chakra. Don't even think about it gender bender, said QB, as she heard Tamari snicker at him, and the boy saying he was wearing war paint. If that was true, then why was there lipstick sticking out of the boy's pocket and labeled property of Sabaku no Tamari on it? But Naruto, the Sandame, and Arachimaru. It seems we're at a standoff. On one hand, I would like to kill the old man myself for his act of betrayal against me, but if I do try, I know you'll try something on me afterwards Arachimaru, and I know better than that. Same could be said for you too old man, said Naruto seeing the two Kage level shinobi standing on either side of him several feet away, and both were being very cautious of him. And rightfully so. What do you say Siratobi sensei Put aside our differences to take down the legacy of the Demon King. Said Orochimaru, as he had hoped the barrier would be up before the brat could appear, but Naruto was too fast and most likely too powerful to be kept out. As much as I am sickened by such an idea, there is no other choice before me, and so we'll fight together against our common foe, said the Sandame removing his robes to reveal his battle gear he wore underneath the robes. You'll do anything to escape your judgment old man. Even siding with that of traitors, said Naruto seeing the two had decided to team up to face him. I did what I did because the village would have been destroyed. I did what I did because it was the only way to ensure your loyalty, said the Sandame hearing Naruto chuckle and then laugh like he was told a joke. Then why lie to my godmother? Why not have her raise me? Why have my godfather not raised me properly? Why tell them about the QP at all? Why not tell those that knew they were sworn to silence? You know for a professor, you are really stupid, and it shows given the quality behind the majority of your so-called students, said Naruto, as he continued laughing further and upsetting both shinobi before him. Enough talk. Time to die, said Orochimaru, as he brought out Kusanagi, and the third Hokage brought out Enma the Monkey King to become his staff. Bring it, said Naruto, as the two charged him and intent on defeating the legacy of the strongest demon king in all of Makai. They would soon realize that battle instincts were indeed in his blood. With QB. QB. Said Kakashi, as he appeared with his Sharingan active and was fully prepared to use it. Why hello Haddock. Finally able to see I'm not the boy you've denied training for the Chunin exams. Said QB mockingly seeing Kakashi scowl at her. What are you talking about? I trained Sasuke non-stop this entire month to face Gara, said Kakashi, as he was soon joined by Gai, Asuma, and then Kurinai. You forgot about my vessel. Don't you even remember his name? Let me help. It begins with an N and ends with an O. Can you piece together the middle or do I have to write out the entire alphabet to finish what you can't? Said QB, as she saw Kakashi snarl at her behind his mask and knew she hit a nerve. That boy is cannon fodder at best. By all rights, Naruto shouldn't even be in the Chunin exam finals and should have lost to Kiba in the preliminaries. Said Kakashi, as he saw QB laugh at him and smiled wickedly while the other Jounin looked at the man with surprise. Really? Then how do you explain his victory of Hai Uganiji? Not by my hands I assure you. In fact, the only training he got was from the Toad San and Jureya for summoning toads, and even then the man had forbid Naruto from even using them for the finals. Said QB seeing the Jounins in front of her look surprised. Simple. The boy is not a boy. He's a monster. A monster and demon just like you. Said Kakashi, as he prepared to use his Rikiri on QB, and she scowled at him for it. Your sensei would be ashamed of you, said QB seeing the man go wide-eyed and then charged at the Fox Queen. What do you know? You know nothing. Die demon. Rikiri yelled Kakashi, as he charged a QB with everything he had and prayed his Rikiri would strike true to end his mental suffering at losing the person he cared about more than his late father. He was instantly blasted away by a wave of QB's chakra and knocked back towards the three Jounin behind him. Be glad I'm still bound to Naruto-sama at the moment Haddock. I know for a fact he wants to rip you to pieces personally and not just because you left him with such a piss-poor instructor in favor of personally training the Ichiha. Said QB as she saw the other Jounin look at Kakashi with disgust since team dynamics and a sensei teaching each team fairly was considered a golden rule among them. So you're the QBI, Ichiha Sasuke command you to train me and submit to my will, said Sasuke, as he walked towards QB and still had his Sharingan activated. He was instantly kicked away from her and she snarled at the general direction where Sasuke went. That won't work on me anymore Ichiha and don't even think of doing it again or I will kill you, said QB snarling at the downed crippled boy and turned to the direction of the Suna siblings, now with their sensei Baki joining them. 
I just received word from our forces back in Suna that the real Kazikage is dead, and the one here is an impostor, said Baki, as he saw the late Kazikage's children look at him with surprise, and saw the leaf shinobi suspected it was the work of Arachimaru. Inform your forces and pull everyone back, said QB, as she saw Baki look at her with surprise, and so did everyone else. Why are you helping us? Helping Suna? Said Tamari, as she saw QB smirk at her, and it brought chills to her spine. Because I know Naruto-sama would want me to help you out. He's just like his demonic grandfather in regards to being honorable, said QB seeing Baki nod, and instantly got on his radio system to broadcast the news, along with the sign to retreat. Hage's booth. Naruto smirked at the two trying to work together in killing him, but compared to Raisin and the intense training the young Uzumaki went through in his head to catch up to his body. They didn't stand a chance. Naruto dodged Orochimaru's blade, broke the sword arm, dodged the Sandame's staff, the hand that shot out of the staff, and did a perfectly executed spin kick to the Sandame's head, sending the old man flying away from him. Orochimaru tried to use his tongue to wrap around the boy's neck like back in the forest of death, but the boy grabbed the tongue and pulled hard with the result being the long muscled appendage being painfully removed from the Sanin's mouth. Orochimaru screamed in pain as blood left his mouth, making the scream become muffled, and tried to use one-handed seals to perform one of his more complex jutsus right before Naruto punched an arm straight through his stomach. Blood was leaking down the arm of the demon boy as he felt the Sanin's blood flowing out of his stomach and Orochimaru trying desperately to breathe. Hurts, doesn't it? You may be able to dish out pain when the need arises, but you cannot take it, and that is your weakness. How does it feel to know you're about to taste death? Me? I've tasted it on several occasions in the past. The people in this village have always tried to kill me, but they failed thanks to the Hokage, and for good reason. If I died, the Shinigami would have become aware of the contract being broken by them, and Kaiyu-chan would be fully free to do whatever it is she wants to this village. Not that it matters now, as the Shinigami has left Kaiyu-chan under my watchful eye and making things right in the world, said Naruto, as he ripped his arm out of Orochimaru's stomach and the man's intestinal tract. No. Said the Sandame, as he saw his former student fall to the ground dead after losing his internal organs. There's one pain in the ass the Shinigami wanted dead now gone. You're going to join him soon old man. Said Naruto glaring at the Sandame, who was doing the same back, and the Hokage charged him. You know nothing. All I have done, all that I have lost, and all I have sacrificed was meant to keep the leaf safe. What do you know of sacrifice you demonic abomination? Said the Sandame, as he lost many things in life over the years, and many loved ones. Among them were his two predecessors that once wore the title of Hokage, later it was his wife, then his successor to the title of Hokage Namakiz Minato, Yuzumaki Kishina, and now his favorite former student Arachimaru, had been robbed of life. Sure the Sanin had done some evil things, but that didn't mean the man wasn't without a special place in the old man's heart and deserved some form of forgiveness. Right. Me? I don't know about sacrifice. How many times have I been sacrificed for your own gains? How many times was I beaten? How many times was I stabbed by mobs you could have stopped at any time? My security detail when I was a kid failed over 80% of the time, and I was nearly killed by that same detail 50% of that. You've lied to me about everything just to have me under your thumb. Well now I'm going to break your thumb along with the rest of your old and feeble body. Said Naruto, as he blocked the staff, countered a kick, broke the third Hokage's leg, knocked the staff away, broke the old man's left shoulder, his jaw, nose, the other leg, and right arm at the elbow, nearly ripped off the body from the impact of the half-demon strike. It was for your own good, said the Sandane definitely. Try telling that to my father and mother when you see them. After you die, I dare you to explain it to them after facing the Shinigami's judgment, said Naruto, before kicking the Sandame's head clean off his shoulders. Holy shit said the female redeed of the sound four, as she along with the others saw this had kept the barrier up even after Rachimaru died, and were too shocked to even let it down afterwards. Get the fuck out of my sight before I decide to aim my anger at the four of you, said Naruto, not wanting to fight pawns of the later Rachimaru right now. But that said, the barrier around him shattered, and the sound four began to flee back to rice country to do whatever they felt like doing. However, just as Naruto began to walk away, Jiraiya appeared in front of him with an angry look on his face, and it was when the young half-demon returned. You killed the Sandame Hokage, said Jiraiya having witnessed it the murder with his own eyes. According to Grandpa Raisin, I had two on the order of the Shinigami himself. Are you going to tell me I should defy the Shinigami for something that was the Sandame's fault, just like the village is at fault regarding the contract my father made with the deity? said Naruto seeing Jiraiya's eyes widen slightly, knowing what he was referring to in regards to the death god. Even still, the village will seek to punish you, and nothing said can change that, said Jiraiya, as the two were soon surrounded by Anbu, and Naruto just smirked. Nothing. 
are you sure? Maybe you'd like to contact my godmother. I'm pretty sure she'd love to hear how you and the Sandame screwed her over by lying about me being dead. But her godson, who was entrusted by the wishes of my mother to raise me in the off chance you couldn't, and that the village broke the contract the Yandame made with the Shinigami regarding Kaiyu-chan's sealing. Did you ever wonder what the afterlife awaits for someone who has earned the wrath of the Shinigami and breaks a contract with him? Because that's what the Sandame, you, and the rest of the people that went against my father's dying wish did after he sealed her into my body. Perhaps you'd like to die now with the rest of the filth in the village in order to face his judgment and my parents for your pathetic arrogance said Naruto, as he saw Jiraiya sweating now, and the boy knew the Sanin didn't want that. Everyone back away. Now. Said Jiraiya, as he motioned for the Anbu to step away from Naruto, and the elite shinobi were surprised by this. Jiraiya-sama, you can't be serious. This demon has to pay for killing the Sandane. Said the Anbu captain before QB herself materialized beside Naruto, and then whispered something into his ear. Do as I say. I am the strongest shinobi now currently in the village, and my order will be obeyed until an official Hokage has been decreed," said Jiraiya, as he saw Naruto still grinning at him, and it sickened the Sanin greatly. Smart move. Though you are not the strongest shinobi in the village. I am, said Naruto, as he grinned at Jiraiya once more, and then walked away from the man to find a place to relax. This isn't over Naruto. You will have to be punished for this act, said Jiraiya making Naruto laugh like it was a joke. Just try. It will only bring you closer to the death god's doorstep, said Naruto, as he along with QB, were instantly gone from his sight, and deep down. Jiraiya knew the boy was right. Damn it thought Jiraiya knowing that he'd have to tell the fire daimyo what happened regarding the Sandame's death. It was about a week after the invasion before the fire daimyo came to the leaf, his army of samurai right behind him, and meeting with Jiraiya, along with the three governing bodies of Konoha. The man had heard many rumors during the week about the leaf, but they seemed so absurd and was finding them difficult to be true. The descendant of a demon king. Contracts with the Shinigami. Something about the QB being connected to the two. Where did it end? Welcome Daimyo-sama. I trust the trip here was pleasant. Said Jiraiya seriously though decided a little small talk with the feudal lord couldn't hurt. It was pleasant enough given the news that's reached my ears. You, the councils, and the clan heads have a lot of explaining to do Jiraiya-san. I also want to speak to the son of the Yandame, who if the rumors about him are true, is the descendant of a demon king from the demonic realm, and was the vessel of QB, said the fire daimyo, as he saw Jiraiya flinch, and knew that the rumor about that was indeed true. Of course sir. I'll have an Anbu request his presence before you before the meeting starts, said Jiraiya seeing the fire daimyo raise an eyebrow at him. One of the same Anbu, who I believe have failed deliberately in protecting him when he was younger and helped in his mistreatment. I think not. One of my aides will seek him out, said the fire daimyo, as he motioned for one of his heads to find Naruto, and a look telling the man to be respectful. But your aide respectfully doesn't know where to find him, said Jiraiya, as he saw the fire daimyo smirk and look at the salmon like he had an ace of his sleeve. My aide is also an expert tracker, who was trained by his father and former hunter Nin born from this very village. The man can find anyone I wish. Besides, given the general description of the Yandame's son and his features, he shouldn't be hard to find, said the fire daimyo having heard of the description of what Naruto looked like and knew it wouldn't be long before his aide found the boy. But Naruto. The Yuzumaki, now Namika's boy was currently at a training ground sparring with a few shadow clones and being watched by the fox queen QB. It wasn't like there was anything else he could do on account of people avoiding him and QB for being what they were. Even most of the other rookie nine plus guys team were hesitant to go near him now as they feared for what Naruto or even QB in his name would do. The only fraction of the group willing to go near him was Hinata, Shino, and Lee, though Naruto had to visit the latter of the three in the hospital on account of the bowl haircut boy's injuries. You can come out now, said Naruto looking at the trees, and saw a regal yet strong-looking individual, wearing the seal of the fire daimyo on his shoulder come forward before kneeling a few feet away. Namaka's sama it is the respected wish of the fire daimyo that you speak to him in regards to a meeting coming up with the governing bodies of Konoha, Jiraiya, and of course fire daimyo himself, said the feudal lord's aide. Am I to be brought up on charges? Said Naruto seeing the aide shake his head no. Not to my knowledge. The fire daimyo only wishes to speak to you during the meeting. Nothing more, said the aide and saw Naruto nod before motioning for QB to follow. Tell the fire daimyo I'll see him there. Just need to take a shower. Wouldn't want to meet the man without being dressed for the occasion, said Naruto, as he saw the aide nod and then leave to inform his master. You really want to have a meeting with him? For all we know, he allowed your abuse to happen and is trying to cover his ass, said QB not liking human politics anymore than she liked most humans. If the fire daimyo is involved, then there is no better time to kill him, 
said Naruto simply. Okage Tower Meeting Room. I'm Yosama, I must respectfully protest this demonic abomination attending this meeting, and even more so with a QB bitch, said a civilian councilman, as he glared at Naruto and QB hoping the fire daimyo would kick the two out. I asked for the young Namika's clan heir to join us. If he chooses to bring QB with him, then that it is his choice, and I will not oppose her joining us, said the fire daimyo with the councilman grinding his teeth in ager. He killed the Sandame Hokage. My old teammate needs to be avenged, and this monster has to be killed for his actions, said Kaharu, as she saw Naruto scoff at her statement and QB smirking. Considering how the Sandame along with most of the village broke their side of the contract regarding Kayu-chan's imprisonment in my body, I think the one needing to do the avenging would be me, and I'm not afraid to let a certain fox queen have a little fun too. Said Naruto, as he loved seeing the people before him tensing and paling in fear of fighting QB again along with himself. We are above the Shinigami. We are above the laws of such a god. Said Hamura, as he stood up from his chair defiantly, and many on the civilian council were slamming their fists down approvingly. Such arrogance. Perhaps you along with the rest of the civilian council would like to fight me one on one. Said Naruto seeing the proud members of the councils become silent and made the boy smirk. That shut them up thought QB as she saw her master let out another chuckle and lean back in his chair like it was his throne. I thought so. You speak of power, but you have none, and you think this village cannot be destroyed because it has won so many battles in the past. Unfortunately, your victories have only made you arrogant, weak, and making you the target of other shinobi villages that want to see you humbled if not destroyed, said Naruto hearing the protests from the group, and they were silenced by the fire daimyo, raising his hand to silence them. What do you suggest young Namikas? Said the fire daimyo, as he saw the councils protest this, and were again silenced only this time by a glare from QB. Me? I'm not ready to leave the village. Not yet anyway. However, considering the state of things in the village is the fault of the Sandame, I suggest a Hokage be appointed, who is not tied down to the old traditional ways, can keep the councils in check. And see things from a much larger point of view, said Naruto seeing the councils become nervous and Danzo not liking it one bit. Who would such a person be that even you can trust? Said the fire daimyo knowing right now almost everyone in the village was on not so friendly terms with Naruto. My godmother. Send you soon a day, said Naruto seeing the councils explode in anger and knew they would hate his choice. Out of the question. She is a drunk. A gambler. She abandoned the village all these years, and I highly doubt the woman will come back just for him. Said Danzo seeing Naruto looking back at him with narrowed eyes and challenging the crippled cane walking man to do something. Soon a day only left because a certain dead Hokage and her former teammate of the Sanin lied about me being dead. I am the last thing she has to family right now and can keep her anchored in the leaf. She is the best medic in the elemental countries regardless of her vices, and I think it's high time my godmother came back to the village to fix this broken thing it's become. One that I don't need to remind you all her grandfather and uncle helped create years ago. To not even consider appointing Tsuna Day for the title of Hokage of the Leaf would be considered an insult, said Naruto grinning at playing his trump card. And saw many of the councils fidgeting slightly knowing that was true with the insult, possibly causing the woman to reconsider her loyalty to Konoha. Unfortunately, Senjutsuna Day is hard to reach, if at all right now, and someone else closer to home should be appointed. Someone like myself, said Danzo hoping the fire daimyo would consider that fact. You? Please. You're a year older than the Sandame Hokage. The sight of you will only make the least enemies double in number, said Naruto seeing the warhawk narrow his eye at him. Naruto-sama, I sent something behind the man's covered eye. I think. He might have a Sharingan underneath it, said QB in a whispered voice making Naruto narrow his eyes at Danzo. I'm afraid I have to agree with Namika's and on this Danzo. Tsunade is much younger, and her medical skills would help the leaf immensely in refining the hospital along with the staff, said the fire daimyo, as he saw the man looking unhappy, and it made Naruto smile further. Even if you could appoint Tsunade as the Hokage, you would have to find her first, and that in itself is troublesome, said Nara Shikaku getting elbowed by Inoichi to shut up. If I could bring her back, would you appoint my godmother the title of Hokage? Said Naruto, as he saw everyone looking at him now and getting everyone's attention. I suppose. She would have to agree to it of course, said the fire daimyo, as he knew the woman wasn't very fond of the title, which made him surprise originally that Naruto would request Tsuna Day for the position and even offering to bring her back. You leave that to me, said Naruto grinning a devilish grin. Very well. As of now since this mission is of high importance, I am giving you the rank of Chunin and appointing you to find the last Sanin to bring back to the leaf. Until Tsuna Day returns to Konoha, if at all to be appointed the title of Hokage, I will temporarily stay here to handle this village's affairs myself and assign you Jiraiya to assist Naruto in finding Tsuna Day. 
said the fire daimyo seeing Jiraiya going pale with fear, knowing that finding Tsuna Day was like a rabbit trying to find a hungry wolf. I'll need the help of some good trackers. I have two in mind that I can trust, said Naruto seeing the fire daimyo think about it for a second before nodding. Very well. You have several days to prepare for this mission, just let me have the names of the people you want, and I'll make it official, said the fire daimyo with his words effectively ending this meeting. I'll let them know and find out if they're interested, said Naruto leaving with QB to find his potential teammates. A teammate sometime later. That's enough training for one day, said Kurinai, as she had her team working up a sweat in today's training and decided to give them a descent break. Come on Kurinai-sensei. I have to get stronger said Kiba, as he was still kicking himself for losing in the preliminaries against Naruto, and that he got to avenge Hinata's honor. He will Kiba, but there is no real rush, as the next Chunin exams are pretty far away at this point, and rushing things won't help, said Kurinai, as she counted her blessings over the fact Naruto hadn't transformed into his new demonic form when fighting Kiba and put the Inuzuka in the hospital. Well said, said Naruto appearing behind the Jounin and saw the two people he needed for his upcoming mission. Naruto. What are you doing here? said Kiba, as he saw Hinata blushing at the sight of the Namikaze's muscles and growled at the fact his female teammate never looked at him the same way. Even Kurinai had a blush on her face. How unfair was that? Simple. I need Hinata-chan and Shino sent to join me on a mission approved by the Fire Daimyo himself. We're going to track down Senju Tsuna Day to become the next Hokage, with the help of Jureya of the Sanin, said Naruto with Jureya's name spoken with clear disgust. A mission with Naruto-kun. Almost all alone with that manly muscled body of his to Okalad. Joy. Thought Hinata, as she was so happy and would have fainted if not for the fact her eyes didn't want to stop seeing the muscled masterpiece that was Naruto's upper body. Senju Tsuna Day is one of the three Sanin. Her medical skills and knowledge are known throughout the elemental countries, said Shino seeing Naruto not in agreement. She's also my godmother. That aside, the line of potential candidates for being Hokage is short and there is no telling who the fire daimyo may choose for the position. That old team Danzo wants it badly from what I could see, said Naruto, as he saw Kurinai raise an eyebrow at that, but she didn't disagree, knowing the old Warhawk had quite the rivalry with the Sandame Hokage for the position. When to do we leave for the mission? Said Shino while Kiba was now complaining about not being on this mission. In the next few days so get packed for the long trip. Tsuna Day has been dodging creditors since before we were born and won't be tracked easily. Be sure to bring your A-game, said Naruto seeing Shino nod and leave to prepare, while Hinata was now pressing her fingers together nervously, since she wanted to ask the demonic boy something. Unbelievable. He turns into an actual demon and she still likes him. Not that she's the only one. A few years from now and Anko will have practically tried to glue herself to his body thought Kurinai, as she saw Hinata walk towards Naruto and hesitate to ask him a question. Then Naruto-kun, I I wanted said Hinata, but unfortunately for her, one Inuzuka Kiba ruined her chance to ask Naruto on a date and got in the Namikaze's face. You think you're hot stuff, don't you? Well you're not. Without QB or that demonic blood running in your veins, you would be the same loser I fought in the Chuanin exam preliminaries and be the runt of the rookies. Said Kiba with Hinata gasping at his words before something inside snapped and she moved so fast it even impressed Naruto. Before Kiba could even register the blow to his face, the Inuzuka was sent flying across the training ground, through several trees, and imprinting himself onto a boulder. With a raised eyebrow, Naruto looked from where Hinata had gentle slugged Kiba to the girl in question, and saw the Hayuga heiress revert back to her usual shy self, complete with a red-faced blush. That hit was like on of Tsuna Day's punches. Thought Kurinai before looking at her student with a sense of pride and developing a backbone, despite it being used to hit her teammate into next week. Impressive right hand you have there Hinata-chan. Most impressive, said Naruto, as he took that hand of hers and gently touched the back of it with his thumb, while the poor girl was having a full-blown close proximity to Naruto meltdown. Naruto-kun's touching my hand. He's touching my hand. Look at those muscles on his body. No, bad Hinata. Don't look or you'll faint. But those tattoos just makes him sexier, and that smile is just... Thought Hinata before her entire mind shut down, and she fainted right into the very place her fantasies would be in the next fraction of a second. Crashing into Naruto's upper body. Tuckling at the girl's actions, Naruto picked Hinata up bridal style and handed her to Kurinai currently watching with amusement, yet cautioning as he tried to do something perverted to the Hayuga heiress. Bidding the Jown in a good day, Naruto left to head to the Namika's estates and prepare for the mission after informing the fire daimyo the two genin had agreed to join him to track down Tsuna Day. And Zaku City two weeks later. You're sure the information was accurate? Said Naruto, as he along with QB, Shino, and Hinata were behind Jureya on a hell looking at the city below them. What? You're doubting my spy network now too. 
said Jiraiya though the look from Naruto told the San and the boy doubted a lot of things about him. No. Just your competence in managing it to provide you with accurate information, since we've been bouncing from place to place to this one, said Naruto before looking at Shino and made a head motion to let loose some bugs to scout the city. Smart ass brat thought Jiraiya as he scowled at his godson and looked away from him. While Shino's bugs cover far and wide we will cover the near and close by ourselves to make finding Tsuna day easier, said Naruto, as he tugged a little on his open Chunin vest given to him by the fire daimyo before the mission on putting together the team to find the lost female Sanin. As the group walked through the city, many were giving Naruto looks, though the ladies seemed to give him ones with lust in their eyes and couldn't ogling his chest. Many of the guys thought the kid was on steroids or something, since they felt there was no way Naruto could have all those muscles naturally. Hinata glared at the woman, telling them all to back off and stay away from her Naruto-kun unless they wanted to face the wrath of a high Ugamane family member. Incidentally, QB was feeling the same way for some reason as she stayed close to Naruto and gave a minor snarl when seeing some girl bat her eyelashes at the demonic grandson of Raisin. I think I've found her, said Shino stopping suddenly after one of his flies landed on his shoulder. Where? said Naruto looking back at his logical friend. Two blocks from us at the bar. A woman with large chakra levels is there drinking sake with another who is estimated to be down in level and is holding a very well clean pig, said Shino not understanding how a pig could be so clean. That sounds like Tsunade and her assistant Shizun. As for the clean pig, it can only be Tsunade's faithful pampered pig Taunton, said Jiraiya confidently. When we get near, I want you to use your Byakugan to confirm it Hinata-chan and see if it is the person we seek, said Naruto wanting to be absolutely sure it was Tsunade and not a bunch of missing nin trying to hide under a hinge. Making their way to the bar, Hinata did indeed confirm it was Tsunade, Shizun, and the pet pig Taunton in the bar. Knowing the appearance of Four Leaf Shinobi would spook his old teammate, Jiraiya Hashino, and Hinata stay outside to watch the exits in case the female Sanin tried to run. As for Jiraiya, he along with Naruto entered the bar, while QB would take a seat at a table near them to keep an eye out inside the place, and the Toad Sanin walked up to Tsunade with hearty laugh with a side of cheer. Something that could have made children cry if they were inside of it. Tsunade Haim. It's good to see you, said Jiraiya in a boastful tone, and saw the woman tense at the side of him. Jiraiya you baka pervert, what the hell are you doing here? Said Tsunade, as she saw the man sit down, and then the kid next to him do the same. To her credit, Tsunade did blush slightly at the sight of the kid's physic he was sporting behind the unzipped Chuanin vest, and Shizun was now cherry red in the face. They were also surprised the long-haired kid had so many complex tattoos on his body and the one on his face around one of his eyes. What? An old teammate can't come into a bar, expecting to have a drink, and not find his long-lost teammate sitting in the same bar doing the same. Maybe it's fate we meet at last for the date I've always wanted. Said Jiraiya, who heard a growl from Naruto at the mention of the word fate and knew it reminded the Namikas of Niji in their fight. Considering how it's you, I don't believe in fate and there is no chance in hell I'm going on a date with a self-proclaimed super pervert. I have standards, said Tsunade seeing Jiraiya smile lessen and turn to the boy next to him. Yeah well, you can't say I didn't try and sweep you off your feet, said Jiraiya, who got an elbow to the ribs from Naruto and it was telling him to focus on the mission. Who's the Gaki? Another apprentice. I thought you swore on Minato's grave never to take another after what happened with QB. Said Tsunade seeing the boy eyeing Jiraiya with anger now, and the Toad Sanin was looking uneasy due to the question. Yeah well. Something has come up back home that made me change my mind, and it involves you too, said Jiraiya, as he got another elbow to the ribs and a growl from Naruto to drop the cryptic talk. Something? Said Tsunade skeptically, as she heard the elbow hit ribs and the ribs of her former teammate cracking in several places. More like someone. Me, said Naruto seeing Tsunade now focus her full attention on him. And you are? Said Tsunade waiting for a name to identify him for her mind. Naruto. Namek is Naruto. I'm your godson. I'm also the killer of the Sandain Hokage and Rachimaru, said Naruto seeing Tsunade drop the sake cup in her hands and heard the gasp from Shizun. What did you just say? Said Tsunade not fully understanding what the boy just said. Again, I said I'm your godson and I killed two people you personally know. The third Hokage, who was once your Jounin sensei, and Orochimaru of the San and your former teammate, said Naruto casually seeing Tsunade look at Jiraiya for confirmation, and the Toad San and grimily nodded at this news. Why? Why did you kill them? Said Tsunade, as she gave Naruto a cold glaring look, and was surprised it didn't faze the boy in the slightest. What do you know of the contract the Yande made with the Shinigami to seal up QB into my body? said Naruto before explaining everything to Tsunade about what the third did, the lies, the beatings, and the neglect that came with his life. 
Bajureya had helped the Sandane lie to her about him being dead after the sealing, so Tsuna Day wouldn't return to the leaf to raise her godson, and that the Shinigami wished the old man dead. Filling Rachimaru too was a bonus at the time, since the Sanin had long overstayed his welcome in the land of the living and had to die too before the day was over. Let me get this straight. My sensei lied to me about your existence, my Baka teammate here helped and violated the contract the Yandame set up when sealing QB into your body. Is that everything in a nutshell on why you killed him? Said Tsunade seeing the boy nod. Yeah. They both robbed you of being a surrogate mother to me, just as they my life of having a childhood worthy having, said Naruto seeing Tsunade glaring at Jiraiya's frightened form. You knew I'd protect him from those bakas or take him away from the village if things got too dangerous to live there. You knew. Said Tsunade standing up with her arms on the table and leaning down to glare at Jiraiya's shaking fear oozing form. What do you want me to say Tsunade? I was grieving. I was at a loss when it came to the death of my best student. When the Sandane told me what he had planned to keep Naruto in the village no matter what, I didn't care about the boy and said I'd help make it happen. Hell, I even told our sensei how to seal the Shinigami signal system in the array design and warn him of what it would do to the seal. Did he care? No. Sensei probably figured he'd be dead at that point and the problem would arise for his next successor to handle it, said Jiraiya, before he felt Tsunade grab him by the throat and lift him right out of his chair. And of course should anything go wrong, you'd be dead around that time too, with a clear conscience on your soul and no regrets in leaving your student son to suffer. Do you really hate the QB so much, you'd hurt your only godson and my godson at that? Said Tsunade she pulled him face to face with her grip on his throat tightening. I've done enough noble things in this world that one little evil act isn't going to deny my right into the heavens when I die Tsunade, said Jiraiya, as he wasn't afraid to die and knew Tsunade knew it too. Actually that's... Not entirely accurate Jiraiya, said Naruto grinning a devilish grin, and it brought the two Sanin to focus their attention back to him. What do you mean? Said Shizu now speaking for the first time since this argument spewed out. Jiraiya can't go up or down on account of what he did so the Shinigamis decided to devour his soul, said Naruto seeing Jiraiya pale at the idea of being punished for his actions and didn't want to die anytime soon. Or later for that matter. That's not fair. Said Jiraiya before Tsunade reinforced her grip on the man's throat. Maybe next time, you won't be so narrowed-minded and do your job in the next life," said Tsunade as she threw Jiraiya out of the bar via the wall and turned to her godson. There's more. The fire daimyo is looking into potential candidates worthy to hold the title of Hokage. The list is pretty short and your name came to the top of the list. Would you be interested in becoming what your grandfather and granduncle did years ago? Said Naruto seeing Tsunade wanting to say something, which most likely what she had personally thought about the position of Hokage, but stopped for a second and began to rethink her answer. In truth, she didn't like the position of Hokage, mainly because all those in her family and heart had died because of it. They either died eventually from having the position or because it was their dream to become Hokage one day. However, if she denounced a position like the Sanin originally planned, then Tsunade would denounce her family and loved ones that strive to have that position. The fire daimyo supports the idea of me being Hokage. Said Tsunade finally before Naruto nodded his head. Sure does. Thinks your medical skills could help rejuvenate the hospital and re-educate the staff there, since they seem to have become lazy, said Naruto, meaning the hospital staff didn't like him and would rather forsake the Hippocratic Oath in order to have their revenge on QB. I suppose being Hokage wouldn't be bad. It would get me away from those damn debt collectors, said Tsunade seeing Shizun and Naruto sweat drop. And let's not forget spending time with your godson. Your only godson at that, said Naruto seeing Tsunade pause before smiling sheepishly. That too. Said Tsunade seeing Naruto look at Shizun with a raised eyebrow and the woman sighed. It's the sake. Blame it all on the sake. It's what I do, said Shizun embarrassed by her teacher's behavior well said busty blonde glared. Anton let out an oink in agreement to Shizun's statement. I'll keep that in mind, said Naruto, as he walked out of the bar with the two women and Pig so they could meet his three teammates for this mission. So you're QB? Said Tsunade, as she had to admit the Fox Queen was quite beautiful for a female demon and saw the seal on her neck, proving she was indeed still bound to Naruto. Yes. Currently in the service of Naruto-sama for Kami knows how long, said QB, as she saw Tsunade measuring her up and yet sensed the San and was pleased to know one of the most powerful demons in this world was female. Don't act like you don't enjoy being around me Kayu-chan, said Naruto, as he smirked at her and saw the blush reach the Fox Queen's face. Aka thought QB, as she saw Tsunade raise an eyebrow at her, and the Fox Queen just gave a look that said don't ask. Send you Tsunade, meet my two teammates I recruited for this mission. Aburam Shino and Hayuga Hinata. 
they are part of the genin tracking cell for Team 8 and two of the few people in the leaf I trust, said Naruto seeing Shinobo respectively and Hinata doing the same, though she had a blush on her face because of him. Not bad. Jiraiya finds me with his spy network, then these two use their tracking skills to follow the trail and confirm it's really me before the encounter. In the event I resist, you along with QB keep me from running and bringing me back to Kanoha by force if necessary. I can see why you got promoted to Chuanan in the first place, said Tsunade, seeing the demonic boy let out a chuckle at the praise and wave it off. Ranks and titles mean nothing to me Tsunade. I'm just a simple person trying to make my way through this cruel world, said Naruto laughing before looking at Jiraiya finally getting off the ground after being thrown through the wall of the building earlier. Okay. Mission successful team. Now let's head back to Kanoha. Said Jiraiya while staggering over to them. It's late in the afternoon. Nightfall will be upon us in a few hours. Logic dictates we stay somewhere tonight and then return in the morning, said Shino with the rest of the group agreeing. Some place fancy. Expensive even. And you Iro Baka are paying for it all whether you like it or not. Said Tsunade seeing Jiraiya gapping at her while Naruto agreed with that statement. Why me? Why not Naruto? Said Jiraiya knowing the kid's clan fortune wasn't small by any means. Because, as your future Hokage I said so, and it's not like you're strapped for cash given your damn books being sold all over the elemental countries, said Tsunade, knowing the man had money, but never spent it, and freeloaded off others before they realized the man had the cash to spend. Fine. But only if you let me see your boobs for inspiration purposes for my new book, said Jiraiya, who got punched in the face by Tsunade, and faintly heard the yelling of Baka pervert. By the slug princess. Idiot. Oh well. At least he doesn't know we swiped his wallet, said Naruto, as he saw QB holding the massive thing with lots of cash stuffed inside, and the two were grinning evilly with Tsunade over the amount they had acquired from the Toad Sanon. Nice. Now let's spend Jiri Ayabaka's money, said Tsunade cheerfully. Not far from them, two people wearing black cloaks with red clouds with straw hats with bells on them were watching the group, and the shorter of the two had his Sharingan eyes activated. He was Ichiha Itachi of the Ichiha clan. Next to him, as blue-skinned man with shark-like teeth and wrapped sword strapped to his back looking in the same direction as his partner. He was Hashigaki Kisum and was once one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. So is the QB Brad among them. Said Kisum not being able to properly sense their target among the group. Something is wrong Kisum, said Itachi, as he felt a cold chill run up his spine and that normally told him something bad was about to happen. What? Is the Gaki there or not? Said Kisum seeing Itachi now look at him with a hint of worry. The QB is not in the boy. Not anymore, said Itachi seeing Kissam's eyes nearly fly out of his sockets. What? I thought you said the Yandame's seal wouldn't let that happen. Said Kissam having been told by Itachi about the design of the seal and what it entailed. I thought so too. Somehow, QB has been freed and she is with them down there, said Itachi seeing Kissam go a little pale. So even if we took down the QB, which is a big if unto itself, we have to deal with a Sanin, one Chunin, and two Genin. Not to mention that other one will come back soon too. Said Kissam seeing Itachi shake his head no. The one wearing the Chuanin vest isn't human Kissam. He's something else. A demon stronger than QB, said Itachi seeing Kissam looking ready to have a panic attack. You're shitting me? Seriously? Stronger than the QB? How is that possible? I thought QB was the strongest demon of the nine-tailed beasts. Said Kissam not wanting to believe that they would have to fight two demons instead of one now. I am not, said Itachi seeing Kissam gritting his teeth. So what do you want to do? We have to do something or Pain Sama will kill us, said Kissam knowing they were sent to retrieve the QB vessel, but things had changed and it wasn't like they could just defeat the group with a snap of their fingers. My Sharingan can suppress QB. I'll deal with her. You take the other one, said Itachi seeing Kissam nod, knowing that between them, it was the Ichiha who had the edge in taking down QB and that may be just what they needed. What about the others? said Kissam, as he saw Itachi look at him for a second and then look back at the group. We can't engage them. Focus on our objective when she's alone, said Itachi, as he saw Kissam nod and knew finesse was the better strategy in this case over brute strength. At the hotel suite. Ah the life of luxury and pampering. I love it. Said Tsunade, as she collapsed backward against the soft queen-size bed and loved how it helped relax her back muscles. Very nice. We should rob Jiraiya of his money more often, said Naruto laughing with QB at the idea. Their rooms are over there, said Shizune addressing Shino and Hinata to the two rooms beyond the door to their left. And ours are here on the right, said Naruto seeing Shizune nod. But that said, everyone went to their respective rooms and decided to get some rest before moving out tomorrow back to Kanoha. Sometime later, Jiraiya came into the hotel room before Shizune informed him that his room was the farthest of all of them from Tsunade and to an extent QB herself. 
Shizun's look telling Jiraiya to not even think about looking at Hinata's room or her own for that matter, should the sudden urge to do any research for his dirty books arise from this event. It was around midnight for Naruto that he awoke after sensing two people arriving at his door, and they were not with his group, nor did he sense they were friendly. Getting out of bed, the Namikas walked to his door and opened it just before the shorter of the two in front of him could knock. Would you by chance be Uzumaki Naruto? Said Itachi seeing the boy was a sight to behold with so many tattoos on his body. Namek is Naruto actually. Why? You from I wear something. Because if you are, I'm giving you all of five seconds to turn around and leave before unleashing my anger on your two asses. Decide, said Naruto seeing Itachi's eyes widen slightly and kiss him grinning a bit of fighting an actual Namek is. No. We're actually here for QB surrender her to us or there will be. Trouble, said Itachi hearing Naruto growling demonically at his words and sensing the unbelievable power the boy was generating. I choose trouble. Bring it, said Naruto seeing Itachi activate his eyes and kiss him now unwrapping his sword. Itachi tried to use his eyes to suppress the demonic energy around Naruto, as it would have done with the QBs, but for some reason, the Achiha prodigy found the demonic presence around the boy growing with each passing second. Before the Achiha could react, even with his Sharingan activated, Naruto had moved with unmatched speed and proceeded to punch him hard in the gut that sent the former Leaf Shinobi through the wall across from the boy's room. This um brought his trust sword Samahata down on Naruto, but the Namikas dodged it and grinned evilly at the former Mist Swordsman. Kissum tried again, using different fluid sword swings only a master swordsman could perform, and yet the boy had dodged each of them without breaking a sweat. It was pissing the shark man off something fierce as he kept swinging and missing with Naruto now laughing like this was a joke. Like Hashigaki Kissum was a joke. Hold still you maggot. Said Kissum as he destroyed the walls, ceiling, and floor with his intended target being unhittable. Make me, said Naruto, as he was having a much better time fighting Kissum than he had fighting Orochimaru and the Sandame. This guy knew how to fight. Still. All things had to come to an end. Dodging a vertical swing from Samahata, which was now mere inches from his shoulder, Naruto launched a vicious spin kick at Kissum's head, which sent the swordsman flying across the corridor of the hall, skidding across the wooden floor and creating a spiderweb crack in the wall he hit. Kissum got up off the ground, spitting the blood leaking into his mouth, and saw Naruto was joined by QB, Tsunade, Shizun, Jiraiya, and the two other genin, having heard the sounds of battle. Kissum, we need to leave, said Itachi, as he appeared clutching his ribs where Naruto hit him and saw his teammate wasn't ready to go just yet. Damn brat. No one lands a hit on me and lives. Said Kissum, as he was going through hand signs for a water jutsu to flood the area. You obviously think I'm still human. Here's some free advice. I'm not said Naruto, as he grinned to kiss him and pointed his right index finger at the swordsman with red ball of demonic energy, forming into a smaller ball at the tip of the sharpened fingernail. Kiss him. We need to retreat. Now. Said Itachi, but it was clear his partner didn't care and chose to ignore the Achiha. Water style. Tidal wave jutsu. Said kiss him before launching a massive blast of water down the corridor at the group. Demon gun said Naruto before firing the single shot of red demonic energy at the water and destroyed it, while Itachi grabbed Kissum to barely dodge the attack that left a massive hole in the wall. He just destroyed my jutsu with a single shot of that. Attack. Thought Kissum seeing Naruto grinning at him. You should thank your partner fishy boy. There was more than enough demonic energy in that attack to wipe out 100 of you, said Naruto, as he walked towards the two and was cracking his knuckles with glee written on his face. Not giving Kissum time to respond, Itachi grabbed his partner and unleashed the power of a Madarasu on the floor in front of them to keep the demonic boy at bay. Naruto stood in front of the dark flame, scowling at it, knowing that even he had to be cautious when being near this flame, and saw the pair retreat through the very hole he made. Don't touch it. That fire is very dangerous, said Jiraiya, as he used his skills in sealing to contain the dark fire into a scroll and put it away for further study. Who were they Jiraiya? said Tsunade, as she had seen one was Itachi and the other was from Mist, if the sword was any indication. One was Ichiha Itachi and the other was Hashigaki Kisum. They are both part of an organization called the Akatsuki. Its purpose from what information I've gathered on them is to capture all the tailed beasts and use them in some manner, said Jiraiya seeing Naruto glaring at him, and so was the Fox Queen herself. And you were going to inform me of this when? Were you even going to tell me at all? Or train me to combat them? said Naruto seeing Jiraiya looking away from him. I had orders not to by the Sandame. When the organization was brought to his attention, I recommended the training you to prepare for them was the best option, but the old man said differently and wanted to keep you bound to the village, said Jiraiya, as he seen the boy growl. And saw his clawed hands flex. And like a good subordinate you obeyed knowing the decision the old fool made was wrong. 
Why am I not surprised by your spineless actions, said Naruto seeing Jiraiya scowl at him now. I trusted the sand aim to make the right decision regarding your life Naruto. It wasn't my place to question my former sensei, said Jiraiya, who was blown back by a burst of demonic energy by Naruto. And found himself pinned to the wall with a near-crushing grip from the hand wrapped around his throat. Wasn't your place. So the abuse I suffered wasn't your place to stop knowing it was wrong. What kind of godfather are you to let your only godson suffocate under the oppressive rule of your so-called sensei that wished to have me under his thumb? You are unfit to be my godfather much less stay alive to see the next sunrise," said Naruto, as he so wanted to crush the man right now and send him to the Shinigami for his crimes. Do it. Send me to oblivion," said Jiraiya, as he saw the desire in Naruto's eyes and the boy's free hand, ready to do what it did to Orochimaru not that long ago. Surprisingly, Naruto didn't kill him and simply let go of the Sanin while looking down at the man's slumped form on the floor. In due time Jiraiya. You still have some use, but don't think your use in this world will be enough to repent for your past sins against me and my family in general, said Naruto before walking away from the Sanin. Who said I wanted to repent? Said Jiraiya mumbling to himself, but QB heard it and she retaliated by kicking the man right between the legs. Say something like that again pervert and I will kill you myself for your crimes against his family, said QB, as she walked away and let the man whimper for the rest of the night alone, knowing he would be pissing quite a bit of blood for over a week. Kano has several days later. I see the invasion left its fair share of marks on the place, said Tsunade, as she walked with a group into the leaf and saw signs of where the invasion hit pretty hard. You would think the invasion would humble them and realizing Kanoha isn't invincible like they've led themselves to believe, but all it does is inflate their ego due the enemy losing in the end, and it has only increased their arrogance, said Naruto, as he saw the people glaring at him. And whispering names in his direction. I still say you should kill them all Naruto-sama. They deserve nothing more than death and suffering at the hands of the Shinigami, said QB, as she wanted to see this place burn so badly and could almost smell the fires of hell rising from the ground to make it happen. They'll die soon enough Kaiyu-chan. Just hold out until then, said Naruto, as he would make changes to this place when he became its Hokage eventually, and his first order of business then would be to wipe out the old generation so the new one could grow more freely. Yes Naruto-sama, said QB, as she blushed slightly at his use of her name, which was toned with affection and was different from when Raisin had used it. Not if I can help it thought Yureya, as he was walking with a limp and was a bit angry Tsunade refused to heal his injury so he wouldn't piss blood. When the group got the Hokage Tower, Tsunade greeted the fire daimyo, telling the man she would become the new Hokage of Konoha and that she would do everything within her power to make things right. The fire daimyo accepted her words, and the two prepared for the inauguration ceremony to take place in the next couple of days. The two councils were far from thrilled from this, as they would rather support Danzo in being the new Hokage than her, and his root program over the medic one Tsunade wanted to create years ago, back during the Second Shinobi War, when the Sandame Hokage was still young. We do not approve of your appointment to be Hokage lightly Tsunade. Even if it is backed by the fire daimyo, said Kaharu, as she looked at Tsunade sitting in the Sandame's chair, wearing the Hokage hat and the robes to match. You don't like it, then retire from your position and let someone else take over with more vigor in their bodies, said Tsunade, with a look that told the older woman to challenge her further if she dared. What my former teammate and fellow councilman is stating Hokage-sama is that we are merely against the idea of you favoring that demonic thing responsible for killing your predecessor, said Hamura, as he saw Tsunade smirk at that and nod her head slightly. I suppose I should feel something close to anger for that simple fact. If not for another one where my predecessor and former sensei lied to me about my godson being dead. But you all had a hand in his abuse with having the village populace move against him with trying to keep Naruto under your thumb to be your weapon once mentally beaten into submission, said Tsunade glaring at Hamura now sweating heavily under it. Okage-sama, be reasonable. That boy is a demon no matter what. Demons are meant to be controlled by humans, and humans will use them for power. Surely going against the very traditions of the world which have been in place for years is not what you had in mind, and letting that monster walk around with a leash on his neck, said a civilian councilman and found himself being looked at with killer intent behind Tsunade's eyes aimed in his direction. So I suppose the next time a demon needs to be sealed, one of your family members is willing to come forward and volunteer to become a demon. Is that what you're saying? Said Tsunade seeing the council members going pale at the thought of their children, becoming the very things they hated. W we aren't suggesting that Hokage-sama, said another councilman running the merchant district of the leaf. No. So only shinobi should sacrifice their children just to be abused by you? That is not how it works in the leaf and it never will. My grandfather did not want that nor did my granduncle when they founded Kanoha, and I will be damned before I let that happen. 
This is a shinobi village councilman. Not a civilian village. You don't like how things will be run? Then leave. Said Tsunade pointing to the door and seeing them all fidget in their seats unhappily. But that settled, Tsunade informed them all that the fire daimyo had given her his full authoritative permission to run things as she saw fit and fix the mess the Sande made after he came out of retirement. First thing Tsunade did was appoint Shizun as her new chief of medicine at the hospital and giving her former apprentice full control of the building with the slug princess coming around every so often to help make rounds. The next thing Tsunade did was redo the Shinobi Academy's training program, which had thinned out the more serious things one needed to learn about being a shinobi, thanks to all of the greedy civilian council not wanting their children to lose their pure minds. And fatten their wallets with more money. As such, several experienced Chunin and Jounin were commissioned to teach the academy students about the ways of the shinobi, aside from Aruka's boring lectures. Even retired shinobi were brought in, teaching what they learned and about some of the missions Jen and teams went on at first when they weren't training to get stronger. Something that the councils tried to block saying such things weren't in the budget, but Tsunade said otherwise and dared them to say where they didn't have the funds for all these changes. The very idea of Tsunade poking around such things made Dan so nervous that his secret route program thought to be shut down would be discovered as being just the opposite and decided to not oppose the changes knowing that he himself would have to have his organization spread out a little more in certain areas of wealth to cover his own expenses while keeping the funds he borrowed from the treasury being discovered. As for Naruto, right now he was currently standing in front of a nervous and blushing Hayuga Hinata, mustering up the courage to ask the descendant of Raisin out on a date. Come on Hinata-chan. You can say whatever it is you want to me. Don't be afraid, said Naruto seeing the girl pressing her fingers together. W would you like to G go out with Emmy and N Naruto kun? said Hinata, as she had yet to stand being around Naruto and not faint, despite Kurunai speaking to the shy girl upon her return from the mission to retrieve Tsunade. Could you please speak more clearly, Hinata chan? You're whispering, said Naruto before giving the girl a caring look and saw Hinata once more trying to muster up what courage she had to repeat the question a little louder. It wasn't easy for the high Uga heiress considering her crush was currently shirtless and the muscles he was sporting were being very distracting. Would you like to go out with me Naruto-kun? said Hinata, as she had to force her own neck muscles not to look away from Naruto's face to his chest and maybe use her eyes to see further down at his. No bad Hinata. Of course I would. When? said Naruto knowing the girl had a fierce spirit within her body just begging to come out. He had seen it when Hinata fought Niji. Saw that fighting spirit that gave everything she had, everything she was into the fight and wasn't afraid to die for her beliefs. Raisin had said a girl like that had potential to become an incredibly strong woman, and that was what caused the demon king himself to fall for his human love all those years ago. As for Hinata, she just needed a push in the right direction to remove any hesitation when acting on something, and that fighting spirit would become a force to be reckoned with. Something, Naruto had suspected had been gone in the opposite way of things, thanks to the girl's father and all of the Hyuga clan. Tonight perhaps said Hinata, as she couldn't believe he agreed to a date and was asking for when the date would take place. I would love to. I'll see you around. Eight. Said Naruto seeing the girl nod quickly due to words to say that she did being unable to leave her mouth. As the girl walked away, smiling a happy smile she no doubt had not shown in years, Naruto smiled at her form, knowing he would have to prepare for it, but the smile left after sensing an unwelcome presence that was Ichiha Sasuke now fully healed, the pink-haired bitch Haruno Sakura. And the book reading possibly in the closet had a Kakashi. His two former teammates looked less than pleased in seeing him, as they clearly hated his guts, and the Jounin assigned to be their sensei wasn't happy either. So the demon boy is going out with weakest Hyuga their clan has ever produced. Big surprise, said Sasuke mockingly at Naruto and Sakura sneering at him. No doubt she'll spread her legs for him right on the first date and have his baby, said Sakura adding her own negativity to the situation. Funny talk coming from the girl who knows all about giving it up on the first date and having bastard children. Your two families are full of such people and I'm sure they taught you all well on the subject. Well one of them still is anyway since the other was wiped out, said Naruto seeing the two genin glaring daggers at him and the jounin narrowing his eyes at the demonic fighter. Where's QB? said Kakashi simply. That's none of your business Kakashi. Whatever problem you have with her is no longer your concern. She falls under the jurisdiction of the Shinigami, and he in turn has left the Fox Queen in my capable hands to watch over. Any repenting will be done through my watchful eyes, Kakashi. Don't make the same mistake the Sandane did and try to usurp the Death God. On second thought, please do try again, as I'm sure my father would love to speak to you about your actions regarding my life and how showing favoritism to a single student is the wrong path. Said Naruto seeing Kakashi becoming angry at his statement. That bitch killed Sensei. 
said Kakashi with a desire to unleash his Sharingan on the boy. And that justifies what you did. Stunting the training of your sensei's only son because of the fox he sealed inside my body. I still remember the attempt you made on my life when I was five years old. Ironically, it was Itachi himself who saved me from your little attempt and had you removed from my protection detail. It's also ironic that Itachi was one of the few who actually did their job in protecting me, and I really should thank him for that before apologizing for nearly crushing one side of his ribs when we fought after convincing Tsunade to come back to the leaf. Said Naruto seeing Kakashi's eyes widen and Sasuke's narrow in rage. You fraud Itachi. Where is he? Said Sasuke demanding to know. Why should I tell you? The man isn't going to stay in one place for long. He's a missing nin for Kami's sake. Besides, even if you did somehow encounter Itachi, his partner in crime Hashigaki Kisum and former Seven Swordsmen of the Mist would just stand in your way. Tabuza nearly destroyed you with his killer intent alone, but Kisum is at a whole different level and will wipe your ass out, said Naruto seeing Sasuke glaring hatefully at him. I don't care who is standing in my way. I'll kill them because I'm an Icha. An elite. Said Sasuke with his eyes now activated. If you're an elite like you claim, then what is Itachi when compared to you and the rest of your dead clan? Doesn't matter. You're wasting my time. Go back to brooding over your petty revenge Sasuke and take your I play with Ichiha Sasuke dolls, all day fangirl Hirano Sakura with you, said Naruto, as he walked away from the group, but the sound of chirping birds stopped him. And turned to see Sasuke charging him at full speed, with neither shinobi behind the dark-haired boy stopping him. You will bow to my whims. And Ichiha will not be denied what is his and never will be yelled Sasuke as he thrust his arched arm of lightning at Naruto, and the demonic boy looked on in annoyance at the attack. Just before the attack could strike Naruto, the Namakas grabbed the arm at the elbow and broke it at an odd angle, with a punch to the Ichiha's gut following up. Sasuke had collapsed to his knees vomiting up his food for the last few days and was sure a chunk of flesh had somehow come up in the process. Don't test me Sasuke try that again and I'll do worse, said Naruto walking away from down to Ichiha, only to see Kakashi in front of him with a kunai in his hand. Uzumaki Naruto, I'm placing you under arrest for assaulting Ichiha Sasuke and will be brought before the councils to decide your fate, said Kakashi getting ready to fight his former student. First off, it's Namika's Naruto you in the closet Baka. Second, the Hokage decide such things Kakashi. Not the councils. Of course you are their little Ichiha ass kissing bitch, so why bother telling you this? As for the Ichiha, you should really be more careful when teaching a arrogant emo like Sasuke the Chidori and the consequences of using it on someone like me, said Naruto seeing Kakashi raise his Sharingan eye for all to see. You will be punished for hurting Sasuke, said Kakashi getting ready to fight Naruto. No he won't, said QP appearing in blaze of crimson chakra and glaring at the Jounin in front of her with that damn eye. You? said Kakashi venomously. I suggest you leave now Haddock-san. The Hokage is well aware of what has transpired here. Don't dig yourself further into an already deep hole the Achiha made, said QB, as she had sensed what had transpired. And informed the Hokage to keep an eye on it, with that orb the sand aim always used to see things. This isn't over. Said Kakashi, as he took his downed student and his frozen pink-haired one away from the two demons. Does the Hokage really know? Said Naruto looking at QB with a raised eyebrow. No, but they don't know that. If anything, I can use it for ammo later in a meeting with them and make Haddock spill it for me, said QB smirking in a fox-like way that made Naruto laugh. Good idea. Come on Kaiyu-chan. I need to get ready for my date later tonight. I need a woman's perspective on what I should wear on my date with Hinata-chan, said Naruto, as he saw a glimpse of QB's displeasure at him going on a date with a mere human. And knew the fox queen was feeling the stinging feeling of jealousy, even if she didn't know that it was jealousy she felt. Though like Naruto, QB would eventually realize it would all come together soon enough and the Fox Queen would have to make a choice in pursuing such feelings. Thanks for watching guys, that's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, don't don't forget to like and subscribe, see you next time, until then bye take care.